16 versus 32 gigabytes of RAM, what should be the go-to for gaming PCs in 2023? This is a question that I've been thinking about, so I've done some testing and the results are kind of surprising. With 16 gigabytes being the norm now, how long do you think this will last for and when do you think 32 gigabytes will become the norm for gaming PCs? Let me know in the comments down below. A lot of games these days, especially the new AAA games, are starting to recommend 32 gigabytes for their recommended RAM spec. This has pushed 16 gigabytes down to the minimum requirement. So gamers, if you're still on eight gigabytes, uh, I think you should have upgraded quite a while ago. But if you're a creator like me, I like to game and do video editing on my PC, you've probably had 32 gigabytes for a while and you're probably not worrying at all about this. So me and you lot are probably fine. But for most gamers, they have no more than 16 gigabytes of RAM installed in their PC. And this video is more to them seeing if they should potentially upgrade their memory to 32 gigabytes in their PC. So if you're going with 16 gigabytes, are you leaving performance on the table or does 32 gigabytes not even matter and you might be getting the same performance? Let's find out in the benchmarks today. All testing today is done on my test bench system which has a Ryzen 5 5600G and for the 16 gigabyte configuration we have two 8 gig sticks of XPG 3200 MHz CL16. And for the 32 gigabyte setup, we have my old Corsair Dominator, which actually used to be in my PC. But this is two 16 gig sticks running at 3200 MHz CL16. So the memories and the timings are pretty much identical. Maybe some of the sub timings might be a bit quicker on the Corsair modules. Testing has been done at 1080p with the GTX 1080 Ti, and I am actually making a video on this, so if you want to see that, make sure you stay subscribed for that. But this should be a good pairing for our Ryzen 5 5600G for this test, as some games might be a bit CPU bound and some games will be GPU bound. So we get a good mix of different game titles in there as well. Starting off the performance benchmarks today with Cyberpunk 2077, and here I set it to the medium preset with high textures. And 16 gigabytes here got 77 FPS on average with 46 FPS for the 1% low. Cyberpunk notoriously doesn't really go up with the averages when I tested it with single versus dual channel memory back a few months ago now. But the 1% load does go up quite a bit when we switch to 32 gigabytes here. It went up to 57 from 46. So that's an improvement of 11 FPS. And the average went up to 80 from 77. So that's pretty minor there. You probably won't notice that. But you would notice the 1% lows. So performance here with 32 gigabytes is pretty good if I'm honest. Next game up is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and this game it just notoriously does not care what CPU and what memory config you have, it just will perform the same, it's totally GPU bound. And that trend continues here, because here I set it to the basic preset with high textures just to force a lot of frame rate through the GTX 1080 Ti and uh, yeah it only went up by 1 FPS with both average and the 1% low with 32 gigs installed, so yeah, it, it doesn't really care what memory you've got or what CPU you've got. So yeah, Modern Warfare 2, 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes, you're going to be fine. Next up is Fortnite, and this is probably one of the games that saw the biggest change, I guess. And not going to lie to you, I was totally expecting this because with 16 gigabytes, it got 177 FPS on average and 32 up this to 236 that's a massive change of 59 and yeah that is quite substantial so if you've got a 240 hertz monitor you definitely notice this even with the one percent lows they went up from 96 to 149 which is also absolutely massive and this translated to much smoother gameplay just get 32 gigabytes of ram and call it a day the performance is night and day better here the next game up is GTA 5 and admittedly it's a bit of an older one now but it can still benefit from better specs that's because GPUs these days they just push so much frame rate in GTA 5 it's ridiculous. 16 gigabytes got 107 FPS on average but 32 gigabytes up this to 117 that's an improvement of 15 FPS and the 1% low also shot up from 74 FPS to 87 FPS and the game did feel a bit smoother after this but it wasn't night or day so 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes again in GTA 5, not too bad, 
You might be leaving a bit of performance on the table, but it's a story game. I'm not sure if you're going to care too much about how much FPS you're getting. Forza Horizon 5 on the high preset did see a slight jump when switching to 32 gigabytes. So that's because it got 108 FPS on average with 88 FPS for the 1% low with 32 gigabytes. This was a fairly minor jump for both figures here. Maybe a bit more so for the 1% low, but performance is better with Forza Horizon 5. So yeah, 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes here again, you're going to be fine on either one. And yeah, I wouldn't sweat it out too much if you're panicking over performance if you've got 16 gigabytes in this title. Atomic Heart is up next, and this is a game that just notoriously just does not care what CPU or memory you've got, just like Modern Warfare 2. And in the first mission with the high preset, 16 gigabytes got 82 FPS on average with 61 FPS for the 1% low. Switching it up to 32 gigabytes netted a 1 FPS improvement in the average frame rate, which could be just down to margin of error if I'm honest, so yeah. And the 1% low went up by 5 FPS to 66, so that's not too bad, but then again, 16 or 32 gigabytes, you're going to be fine here. F122 actually did surprise me here because I thought this game was just not very CPU or memory demanding at all. But it is when the 5600G is paired with a relatively powerful GPU because the 1080 Ti is still actually very powerful. With 16 gigabytes, we got 120 FPS on average with 75 for the 1% low. And the average did actually shoot up with 32 gigabytes going to 153 FPS on average. And the 1% low did go up fairly minorly to 88 FPS. This was done in my wet Australian Grand Prix benchmark and yeah, performance with 32 gigabytes is a lot better. You'll be getting over that refresh rate threshold if you've got 144 Hertz monitor. So these are the settings I'd recommend playing with. So if you're playing F122, it might be worth getting 32 gigabytes as you're going to want as much FPS as possible in a racing game like this. Last game up today is Rainbow Six Siege, and to be honest, I was expecting a bit more of a performance uplift with Siege, but then again, if you're getting 243 FPS on average with a 1% low of 157 FPS with 16 gigabytes installed in your PC, I don't think you're going to be moaning too much. But then again, the averages and the 1% lows did bump up with 32 gigabytes going to 270 for the average and 176 for the 1% low. So you are getting a bit more performance when you go to 32 gig, but it's not make or break in this title. The averages saw some minor to significant bumps when moving to 32 gigabytes of RAM. On average, with the eight games tested today, there was a 14% uplift in performance. I personally would take this as it is a pretty, I wouldn't say it's a minor uplift in performance, I wouldn't say it's major, it's fairly moderate, but then again, I don't like leaving performance on the table, so I would take this upgrade. Switching to the 1% lows, and it follows pretty much the same trend as the averages. The performance scaled a bit more when games were more CPU bound, but here across the games tested today, we saw a 19% performance uplift with the switch to 32 gigabytes. Some games, notably Fortnite and even F122 for that matter, were noticeably smaller with 32GB of RAM at these settings. So why is 32GB of RAM performing much better in some games? And I believe this is down to the nature of how 32GB kits are used with DDR4. That is because they are something called dual rank. So they've got memory chips on both sides of the memory stick, which increases memory bandwidth, therefore increasing performance. I won't go into the technicalities of it because to be honest, I don't quite know them. But all I know is dual rank memory is very beneficial, especially on AMD Ryzen systems when you're CPU bound. You can also mimic this operation with four 8 gig sticks, which does equal 32 gigabytes. So you can do that as well. So don't worry if you've got two 8 gigabyte sticks, stick another two in there, up in that to 32 gig and you'll get basically dual rank operation as you've got four sticks in there. So it will work essentially the same. You should only see a difference in results if you're doing a CPU or memory intensive task like video editing or if you're CPU bound in games. Here with some of the CPU bound games today like Fortnite and even F122 and even Rainbow Six Siege for that matter, we saw a pretty significant jump in performance when we switched to 32 gigabytes of RAM. Just like with anything in PC gaming, there are both pros and cons to 16 gigabytes 
and 32 gigabytes. Starting off with the pros of 16 gigabytes, and the main thing about them is they're just incredibly cheap. For around 35 pounds, you can pick up a 16 gigabyte kit of 3200 megahertz CL16, which is incredible value especially if you're knocking together a budget gaming PC. Also, due to the inherent nature of 8GB sticks, as 16GB kits come with two of these, they are single rank, and this is both a pro and a con. You get less memory bandwidth, but single rank sticks can often clock quite a bit higher than dual rank sticks. And this is pretty much where the pros end, because 16GB, you have less headroom there, they're kind of useless for creating content, and to be honest, for gaming now, you are leaving a bit of performance on the table. And this brings us onto the pros of 32 gigabytes. With DDR4, each 16 gigabyte stick is usually dual rank. And as I've said, this increases memory bandwidth, therefore increasing performance in CPU bound scenarios. Also with 32 gigabytes, you get more headroom as well and more future proofing with your gaming and content creation PC. So that's another benefit right there as well. Potential cons of 32 gigabytes are these. They tend to be more expensive than 16 gigabytes and that's for good reason. You're getting more for your money, so you're gonna have to pay a bit more, but they usually cost around 55 pounds here in the UK if you can get them on a good deal. So they're not that much more expensive and I'll just recommend paying for them. Also, as they're dual rank, earlier memory controllers, especially in first and second gen Ryzen, might have trouble running them at full XMP speed. So that is something to look out for as well. You might need to dial back your speeds and you might lose a bit of performance there as well. So my entire recommendation is this. If you're on a very tight budget, and I mean very tight, you've got to save everywhere, maybe 16 gigabytes is worth it for you. But if you're getting 16 gigabytes, Make sure you've got a motherboard with four slots because you can upgrade that later down the line. Also, if you can just save, I'd recommend just saving the extra 20 or 30 pounds. It's not really that much, but I know the cost of living and stuff like that, especially here in the UK, is not particularly brilliant. So 16 gigabytes might be where you need to cut it, and that's totally fine because as we've seen today, it's totally playable. But I just genuinely believe that 32 gigabytes is just worth the extra money. You're getting more performance, more sort of not overhead but you get more headroom i like to say with 32 gigabytes and if you like to create content if you get the higher capacity memory you'll thank me later just now with 16 gigabytes you might be leaving some performance on the table depending on how cpu bound you're going to be so if you've got like an incredibly powerful cpu compared with a relatively weaker gpu i don't know why you'd do that for a gaming pc if i'm honest you probably won't notice any difference going between the pair of them. But if you're going to be CPU bound in a few games, especially if you're pushing high frame rates, you might be noticing, especially the dips in the 1% lows, if you go with 16 gigabytes. And this is why, for a competitive gaming machine, I'd probably recommend the 32. So with that being said, if you found this video helpful, leave it a like, subscribe if you found it very helpful, because I do loads of tech content like this. And I'll catch you in the next one.